This video is part of A2.2 on cell structure, and it's all about organelles and how to draw cells. It is part of the standard level or core content. So these are all going to be organelles that are found in eukaryotes, and I'll show you how to find them in these micrographs. So if I'm looking for the nucleus, I'm looking at this structure right here, and it's got a double membrane around it, and that membrane has holes called pores. We're gonna find all of the DNA in there, and of course in eukaryotes, that's associated with histone proteins. Um, this is going to be the site of DNA replication and transcription, and one of the things that I like to look for is this little dark spot called the nucleolus. It's right here, okay, I'll cover that in green, and that's where ribosomes are made. And we don't necessarily need to know a lot about the function, but it can help us identify where that nucleus is. Another organelle to look for is called the rough endoplasmic reticulum, or RER, -E and it's right here in this micrograph. It's a little bit easier to see in this like cartoon type picture. It's right here, okay? And so we're generally gonna find this kind of like connected to the nucleus or near the nucleus. It's flat sacs um, with ribosomes attached. And it's these ribosomes that are kind of like bumps Okay, and that is why it is rough. This is going to be the site of protein synthesis for proteins that will eventually be excreted from the cell. So this rough ER is going to package those proteins into vesicles and then ship them to the Golgi. So sometimes we'll see vesicles near there, um, but this rough ER, again, right here and then right here, um, look for those ribosomes. Now the smooth ER can be a little bit more difficult to find. I like to remember that it's smooth. Um, lipids are like fats and oils, and I think of them as slippery and also smooth. It's just how I remember it. Um, and it's in real life <laughs> uh, called the smooth ER because it doesn't have any of those ribosomes, so none of those bumps. Now, I don't see any in this micrograph actually, so I don't actually see any of the smooth ER here, but I do see it right here in this picture. When I'm looking for it in a micrograph, what I want to look like or look for are these like holes or circles. And so that would be these structures right here. So if I'm seeing those kind of near in the same vicinity as the rough ER, what I should be thinking of is the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Now the Golgi is one of my favorites to find. It kind of looks like a Wi-Fi symbol. That's how I remember it. Um, these are, again, flattened, curved sacs, and they're going to be processing proteins that are coming from the rough endoplasmic reticulum or other parts of the cell, and they're going to be wrapping them in vesicles and then shipping them out of the cell. So one of the things that I generally like to look for in terms of finding the Golgi is I look for placement. Um, oftentimes we'll see it in different parts, but um, oftentimes in the micrographs that we have to look at, it's near the periphery or edge of the cell. And the other thing that I want to look for are these vesicles. So I might see vesicles near the Golgi. It's either receiving them from the rough ER or it's producing them for export from the cell. Okay, lysosomes are something that I'm going to look for in particular in animal cells. And these are little spheres and they contain enzymes. That's the important word here. They are enzyme sacs and they can be used to digest food or destroy old cell parts. And they become very darkly stained in micrographs. So I wanna pay close attention here in this animal cell micrograph. I, wow, I see a lot of spheres. <laughs> Which of those are lysosomes? Well, not ones like this, okay? This is lightly stained and I can see little squiggly marks in there. More on that later. What I want to look for when I'm looking for a lysosome, again, is a very darkly stained sac, okay? That's round and I'm not seeing any other structures within there. When I think about rounded structures that have squiggly marks in them, I wanna be thinking about the mitochondria. So this is a micrograph of a mitochondria. And this is how I would draw it. So a mitochondria is going to have a double membrane. It's going to have 
both an outer membrane, so I'm seeing that right here, and it's going to have an inner membrane, and that inner membrane has these folds. These are called cristae. Don't worry, we'll talk a lot about those in another topic, but these folds are what we're seeing here in these like squiggly marks, right? So you can kind of see these here. It's a little tough to see once I highlight them, but these are the cristae that we want to look for in micrographs. Um, please do not call the mitochondria the powerhouse of the cell. Um, we need to rewind our brains for thinking that the mitochondria is the site of aerobic cellular respiration. Um, you could also call it the site of oxidative phosphorylation, but that's for another time. In terms of micrographs, um, look for those squiggly marks. Those are the cristae that we're seeing here, and they're a great giveaway that this is a mitochondria. So we've talked a bit about ribosomes. Um, ribosomes are, again, are the site of protein synthesis. I'm going to find them in two places, attached to the rough ER and floating around freely in the cytoplasm. And those are those free ribosomes. So what I wanna be looking for, it's impossible for me to highlight just one, so I'll highlight an area where we can see several of them. Um, I wanna be looking for these small, small dots. So if I blow this up a little bit, I'm going to see some very small um, dot-like structures. Those are the ribosomes. You'll also notice that there are some larger dot-like structures. That's not a ribosome. That's actually a glycogen granule, but that's okay. We wanna look for these small dots. And again, I'll find ribosomes in two spots floating around here in the cytoplasm and attached to the rough ER. Chloroplasts are one of the things that I should definitely be looking for in a plant cell. And chloroplasts also have a double membrane, but they don't have indentations in their inner membrane. The way that I would look for chloroplasts is I want to look for these stacks of what we call thylakoid discs, and I'm seeing a bunch of them. They look like this. They show up more densely or darkly on these micrographs because they are full of chlorophyll, and that is a light absorbing pigment, and so it's gonna stain a little bit darker, so that's what we wanna look for. So vacuoles and vesicles, <laughs> it's nice that they start with the same letter, right? So um, vacuoles are typically something that I really think about associated with plant cells, and in plant cells, I'm going to find that the vacuole takes up almost the entire cell. So that's a dead giveaway here for plant cells. So something to think about there. I typically don't look for them in animal cells because they're very small. We've talked about the paramecium, the chlamydomotus. They also have contractile vacuoles to help get rid of excess water. So we can look for those vacuoles. Um, vesicles are just small vacuoles, um, and they're used for transporting things within a cell. So I'm often going to find them um, next to the Golgi, right, my little Wi-Fi organelle, and I'll find them, they're tiny, tiny little sacs that look like this. So especially when I'm drawing the Golgi, I want to make sure that I include things like vesicles. Um, they're gonna be those little tiny sacs. So if you've ever seen a picture of a cell undergoing cell division and those chromosomes moving to opposite ends, you've probably also seen something called a spindle microtubule. Microtubules are small little cylinders and they have a lot of functions, but the one that we'll focus in on is moving chromosomes during cell division. So they kind of look a little bit like puppet strings. You can imagine them pulling, shortening and pulling these chromosomes apart. Now in animal cells, there are structures called centrioles, and those centrioles kind of form an anchor point for those microtubules. I will only find those centrioles in animal cells. What we don't often see in cell pictures is the cytoskeleton because it would make our pictures look very messy. Um, within that cytoplasm, we're going to have lots of different protein fibers, and that's really going to help these cells maintain their shape. It's going to help pieces and parts move around during the um, different functions of a cell. And the great part about this cytoskeleton is that it can easily break down when we need it to, and then also reform. The protein fibers that make up the cytoskeleton are really versatile in that way. 
And the last cell structure that we should focus in on are these cilia and flagella. So cilia and flagella are really kind of made for movement. They are made out of those microtubules. So they can either be like a whip-like motion, like this flagella, or they can kind of like work together to kind of create a current, like with the cilia here. Um, the way to tell the difference between them, if it's a flagella, it's probably gonna have just one or maybe two, and they'll be much longer. A cilia, we're going to have a lot of them lining the outside of the cell, and they will be much shorter. Drawing and annotating cells is a very common task that we have to do, and we have to know, know how to do this for several different types of cells. So let's start with a prokaryote. I often start out with the cell membrane. And then remember, prokaryotes also have a cell wall. And that cell wall, there's a couple of different ways that you could draw it, like as a double line or as a thickened line. But we definitely want to um, make our drawing proportional. Your cell wall should be thicker than your cell membrane, and it is on the outside. Inside of the prokaryote, we're going to have the DNA, and this is like just one long jumbled loop here of naked DNA. Prokaryotes also have free ribosomes, and these are 70S ribosomes, so the more specific we can be, the better. We won't have any uh, compartmentalization, so none of those membrane-bound organelles. We may have an accessory loop of DNA. Some prokaryotes have a structure called a plasmid. It's an additional loop of DNA. And then some prokaryotes also have flagella. So if you're going to draw a flagella, it needs to be long, like at least twice the length. I'm running out of room here. <laughs> at least twice the length of the cell, okay? So this is a flagellum, that's singular. You could draw two and call it a flagella, that's up to you. But these are the basic features of a prokaryote. I also wanna take a minute to note how to draw things for IB style drawings. Notice that I'm labeling things with a solid line, a clear line, and none of my labeling lines cross. I'm also not using sketch lines, I'm just using, again, solid lines. And my drawing is proportional. So much like the prokaryote, I started off with a thicker cell wall on the outside and a cell membrane on the inside. Now, uh, plants are going to have a nucleus, and that nucleus is a double membrane. So I'm gonna show you the trick that I use for double membrane here. I'm gonna draw two membranes, but remember the nucleus also has pores. So I'm going to make a few pores in my nucleus as well, right? So this is now I'm going to label this as my nucleus. The nucleolus isn't necessarily something that you need to draw um, and label. It's kind of a nice visual point for finding it on micrographs, but you shouldn't need to draw that. And of course there is DNA and chromosomes inside the nucleus, but again, you don't need to draw that and label that. That is just fine. The reason we do that on prokaryotes is because there is no nucleus surrounding it, so it's more of a distinguishing feature. Um, just outside of the nucleus, all right, I usually try to draw my rough endoplasmic reticulum, and that is covered in ribosomes, and that's what makes it rough. Now, taking up a lot of space in plant cells usually is this big central vacuole. So I want to make sure that I am drawing that proportionally. So it's big, so my central vacuole. And then I've got to kind of fit in all of these other things <laughs> that I need to include in here, like a chloroplast. So let's draw a chloroplast. Chloroplasts have a double membrane and they also have these stacks of thylakoid discs. Don't worry, you'll learn so much about chloroplast in um, other topics here, um, but I do wanna draw and label one, so chloroplast. And I'm also gonna see if I can fit in a mitochondria somewhere. Hmm, maybe up here. So mitochondria, again, double membrane, and then on the inside, um, the inner membrane is squiggly, it's got those cristae. So here is my mitochondria. Um, it's mitochondrion for singular. If it's mitochondria, that's plural, but you won't be penalized 
for not knowing your Latin. That's totally fine. Um, other things that I might see here, my Golgi. So maybe I'll fit in my Golgi body here. You can see my planning isn't as good as it really should have been. Hopefully your planning is much better for where to put spaces and labels. It's important if you're drawing the Golgi to also draw some of these vesicles near here. Okay, um, and then maybe the last thing that I'll draw is some ribosomes, and I'll label some ribosomes throughout my cell. Maybe I'll put that label over here. So some ribosomes, let's see if I can maybe spell that correctly. And this um, is a pretty good picture of a plant cell. Notice that I didn't draw all of the possible cell structures. I didn't draw cytoskeleton or microtubules. This is really things that we are going to be able to identify in electron micrographs. So we want to kind of keep it to those structures that are like really visibly apparent. So let's start with some of the features that we're familiar with. Again, I'm gonna have a cell membrane, but no cell wall. Okay, we don't have one of those here. And I have a double membrane uh, with pores, and that is my nucleus. So again, I'm going to draw in the rough ER. So we see those often on micrographs. So I wanna make sure that I'm including that. This is my rough endoplasmic reticulum. Again, I wanna draw um, my Golgi apparatus. So those are flattened curved sacs. They're, they can be found anywhere, but I like to think of them as out by the membrane, getting ready to ship things out of the cell. And of course, their little vesicles are there. So this is the Golgi apparatus. I might draw a mitochondria. So the double membrane, and again, the inside membrane has these curves called cristae. So this is my mitochondria. And let's see, what else should I draw? Maybe some ribosomes. Okay, so I've got ribosomes in a few different places. I've got them uh, free floating here in the cytoplasm and on the rough ER. You can also be fancy and label these as ADS ribosomes. And you can actually do that in the plant cell also because these are eukaryotes. And I think this is all I might draw um, in a um, micrograph. You could, if you wanted to, include something like a lysosome. Remember, those in micrographs are going to be very dark. So this is a lysosome because those enzymes are going to stain um, very darkly. And I think this is a pretty good uh, drawing of what we might see in an electron micrograph for an animal cell.